This is exactly right. Welcome. Welcome to my favorite murder of the mini sewed. Where we read you back your shit. Don't you love it? We're, um, so we do this thing for mini sewed when we're on tour where we read the mini sewed from the states, the st- states we're going to be in the following weekend. Or the upcoming. The upcoming. <laughs> it's very technical. Yeah. The next thing, we're, the next place we're going to go to, we'll read stories from there. Yeah. So to it's, like wet your whistle. Yeah. So Atlanta, New Orleans, Cleveland, Nashville, Nashville, Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland. Just always throw Cleveland in. It Cleveland, Cleveland. We're always coming to you. So do you want me to go first? Okay. You look like you're like. Do you want me to go blow your mind? You want me to go first? I'm going first. <laughs> um, this one is for. It's from Atlanta. It's a story from Atlanta. Okay. Um, hey, Georgia, Karen, Stephen, and fur babies. God damn you. <laughs> I wanted to share with you uh, the night our pup pupper man strike two our pupper charlie saved us from being murdered while i panicked and apparently changed outfits three times before the police even got there okay so my husband brian and i had gone to see paranormal activity too and we headed back to our tiny bungalow overlooking uh the cute shops um police station and restaurants in historic norcross georgia sounds adorable it's a little suburb right out of atlanta's perimeter we went to bed fairly early because brian had to fly out early the next morning for work but we were awoken in terror by our springer spaniel going absolutely mm. crazy at about 3 a.m Ugh, no that's the just the, yeah, after the middle of the night paranormal activity yeah not what you want not cool springer spaniel it's never darker than at 3 a.m <laughs> um <laughs> I knew uh, the second that I heard his bark that something was really wrong. Oh, no. It was like no bark I'd ever heard from him or any other dog. Good boy. We both immediately jumped up and started running toward the barking. Our tiny bungalow had a waist-high white picket fence all the way around it with a big wraparound southern-style front porch. The side door was glass and had the wavy old... uh, window panes Mm. and charlie starts going nuts attacking the window Mm. when we look up there's a man standing there staring at us with his (gasps) arms casually by his side rocking back and forth with the most terrifying smile on his face no no i'm already scared because you know when i don't like sliding glass doors because like on a ground floor because you can't all you can see is your reflection when the yes, lights are on. That's right. That's not okay. You have that, don't you? I have that. And that was just in a movie where we were talking about, oh, oh my God, that's so perfect and, and scary. And then you turn the light off and it's... It's someone inside at night yeah. with all the with all windows going, I feel someone is outside, yeah. but I oh, now I know they can see me and I can't see them. I'm just going to live in a box. Hey. That's all that's happening. Okay. So Brian, who was buck ass naked, screamed at me to get our gun. Holy shit. I was always scared of having guns in the house, so we had a shotgun with no bullets. Oh so my God. I got the empty gun from the closet and Brian still naked cracked it and held um held it through the window <gasps> while I f- phoned someone's Canadian I phoned 911 uh-huh. as I'm waiting uh, on the operator my husband tells me that I have to go back and check the porch he was convinced this guy was the distraction and that more were coming in the back <gasps> oh, oh my god no oh and it says what the fuck <laughs> yeah. WTF yes okay by this point I'm totally out of my man- mind with panic the dog is still going berserk my husband is naked and holding the empty gun on what seemed to be some sort of drugged out zombie but, but luckily I didn't see any one in back by this point the guy now has crossed his arms and is leaning his face against the window staring at brian through the glass he's that close just smiling giggling and whispering things under his no, breath no 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 he didn't break eye contact with brian which somehow made it even more terrifying dude our home was just a few blocks from the police station you could literally stand on the front porch and see the station so once i was on the phone with the 911 operator she was like like describe him so i did and she says oh goodness we know who that is <laughs> <laughs> whatever you do don't chase him if he runs so um it, it says uh what the fuck i'm sorry 
sorry. Apparently, they had picked the guy up earlier in the night and he had just strolled off from the station and ended up at our house. While I was on the phone with 911, my husband said he kept seeing me run back and forth in and out of our bedroom. And each time I ran by, I was in a different change of clothes. <laughs> he said I changed at least three times. Holy I have shit. no memory of it whatsoever. Wow. By the, by the time the police showed up, I had on a summer dress. My hair was pulled up and I had on lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Brian was still naked with an unloaded gun. The police dragged the zombie criminal off the front porch and arrested him in the front yard. They couldn't stop talking about how creepy the guy was, which must be super creepy considering what cops see every yeah. day. Oh, that's so awful. Oh, my God. After Brian finally got um, put on some shorts, he asked one policeman what suggestions he had for better home safety. He said, first, get a dog and then get a security system and then get a gun she knows how to use as he pointed at me. He looked me down dead in the eye and said honey we generally show up to clean up the mess if he'd gotten in he could have killed you and gone in the time it takes us to get here <gasps> it was our seat our sweet baby hero charlie who alerted us to something being wrong and was brave enough to not let up until the police got the bad guy good boy he kept his mama sexy and he didn't let me get murdered good boy i love your show i can't wait to see you live in atlanta in january ssdgm katie i'm gonna cry Charlie, <laughs> what a good boy. Charlie's a good boy. You gotta have a dog. You Listen, got to. I'm a cat person through and through. You know that. But, but they're the fucking, best. There's no there's no substitution for a fucking dog. The there really loyalty isn't. and the fucking fervor. And the the when they were describing of the different sounding barking, yeah. there is a barking George does at the front when there's somebody on the front porch that we he don't know. Doesn't like, and yeah. it sounds completely different than her normal barking. Well, I know when they meow and they want food, <laughs> and when they meow and they just want to talk, when they meow and they're you know this or that. But it's not the same thing. These cats will stare at you as someone breaks into the house. Yeah, they will watch it. Yeah, as it, like they're fascinated. Absolutely, by it. like leave the door open because I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Um, oh my god, that made me want to cry. The, I didn't realize how close he was. His face to the door laughing. And whispering to himself. The whispering. That's just someone who's completely gone. Their mind is gone. Yeah. For whatever reason. I'm also impressed with her husband who like took care of shit, even though his dick was out. Yeah. You know? Maybe because of it. Yeah. Maybe he was starting to feel himself. Yeah. Not what literally. What if he had a whole, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I meant in that kind of Stopping. a man of the earth way. Right. Yes. <laughs> Not in a perverse Like, way. how funny would it be, though, if, he, if... Then he gets arrested. They're like, yeah. sir, you like this crime too Yeah, much. you're really into this. Okay. Uh, this one's called Nashville Foot Stomper Lighthearted. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to happen. <laughs> Hi, friends. Perfect. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and for many years, a man named George Mitchell sparked fear in the toes of my hometown's female citizens. Let's take a step back. <laughs> Storyteller. Uh -huh. George grew up in a rough part of town at an early age, was committing petty theft. Shoplifting turned into purse snatching, and he soon discovered that purses were easier to snatch if he stomped on the woman's foot first. It didn't take many stompin' snatches... <laughs> With an ad, stomp and snatches. Stomp and snatches. For George to realize his true passion, not stealing or snatching, but rather just pure, unadulterated toe stomping. Oh. So he stopped stealing purses. He was just like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> He just liked the feeling of smashing someone's yeah, toes. Yeah, what I'm really into is George was arrested over 40 times for smashing innocent little piggies with his wooden heel dress shoes between the 70s and 80s. Oh, my At God. At some point in the mid 80s, the stomping suddenly halted and Nashville women everywhere sighed with relief as they dared to unbox their long lost open toed sandals. <laughs> You can hear more about the Nashville st foot stomper in a documentary called Injurious George. Injurious In George? Injurious George. Injurious oh, George. Injurious George. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm, I got it. George has ceased his cringeworthy ways, moved to another state, and is now a dad and a grandfather. What? So there you have it. A happy ending for all. I don't know. <laughs> Namely, Nashville's female population who enjoys showing a little toe from time to time. P.S. I recently ran the Marine Corps Marathon and saved multiple weeks of episodes so I could listen to nonstop MFM r during my race. Thanks for getting me through 26.2 miles with murder and meows. Love and sexiness, Allison. Wow. Ouch. First of all, Allison, congratulations on yes. the marathon. 
that's a hard thing to do and I will never do it. I mean, I hope never to do it. I hope never to be forced to do that. God damn it. That's my ultimate fear. Never. Marathon, skydiving. Never need to. Um, what else? Bungee jumping. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to go back to marathon. <laughs> <laughs> just double down on that one. I'm going to triple down on Marathon and walk away a winner. Okay, this one, the subject line is Haunted Elevator with a sol- surprise celebrity cam- cameo. Love it. Love it. Love it. And how about this? Hi, everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Get creative, though, sometimes. <laughs> love it. Love everything about it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's the first line. That's the best. Beautiful. Okay, so my hometown in Atlanta, Georgia... My hometown is Atlanta, Georgia, and my hometown murder forward slash ghost story uh, also happens to include the single most bizarre encounter of my life. Back in 1994, my mother remarried into an extremely wealthy Jewish family when she married Get it, girl. my stepdad. Get it. Um, and stack it up. <laughs> my new family and I come from vastly different backgrounds. Um don't know if you ladies have watched the show Shameless, but the character Mickey Malokovich is a male version of me when I was coming up. If you haven't seen the show, I was on my way to being a piece of convict garbage. No offense to a convicted felon. <laughs> anyway, on the first night of Hanukkah 2002, my family celebrated at my step grandmother's home. She lives in a high rise in an uber wealthy part of Buckhead and her building has elevators you can only use after the front attendant has given you clearance. Uh-huh. Oh, I get it. Love it. Fancy. Mm-hmm. My stepdad, Andy, is my usual sidekick at family functions, but Aww. he wasn't feeling well that night, so he didn't attend the party. Without him, I felt out of place and ended up hanging out. That's so sweet. Her stepdad was her sidekick. I know. I it's very it. sweet. Um, I felt out of place and ended up hanging out with one of the concierge staff in the downstairs lobby. <laughs> we were shooting the shit, drinking some booze. Love it. I'd smuggled down from the party. Um, when I started hearing a consistent dinging sound coming from the elevator from a side corner of the lobby, it sounded like somebody was pressing the button to open and close the elevator, but wasn't getting off for whatever weird reason. I looked over and could see the floors opening and closing the doors opening and closing and the lights inside flickering on and off. I asked the attendant if the elevator was broken and he casually responded, responded, no, it's just haunted. (gasps) He told me that a few years earlier, a bloody man had run screaming into the building after being shot in an altercation down the street and had collapsed and died no. in the elevator. No. Apparently, the guy who had been the perpetrator was trying to run from the police but didn't make it very far. Um, oh, the guy had been the perpetrator and was trying to run from police oh, okay. but didn't make it very far. The attendant told me that ever since the death, the elevator had behaved strangely no matter how many times they had had it serviced. What? The doors opened and closed on its own and it acted like it had a mind of its own, taking tenants to random floors, <gasps> going up... Um, going up them all the way back down without opening the door. <laughs> Shit. Uh, going up then all right, the way right. back down without opening the door and generally being pretty creepy. I thought the attendant was just pulling my leg and I told him I thought he was full of shit when a pleasant British voice chimed in behind me saying, oh no, that elevator is most definitely haunted and I refuse to use it. I turned around to see who else believed this bullshit only to see it was Elton fucking John standing there. What? Wearing a blue, a a pair of blue pajamas and one of those stocking cap hat things that you might expect to see on an elf. (laughs) Wait, Steven is laughing so hard right now. Steven, did you write this as a prank? (laughs) This is insane. You found it and you were like, I have to give this to them. And (laughs) he's he's laughing in a way that he's like excited. Oh, it's so good. It's It's, so good. It's You gotta love a celebrity cameo. This is an epic. Um, after a second of me staring at him while I tried to process what I was seeing, he gave me a cute little head nod and wandered off down a side hallway. What? That's the story of how I learned that Elton John lives in my step grandmother's building, that he believes the elevator's haunted, and that he has some sweet ass pajamas. <laughs> Cheers, Amber. P.S. My stepdad is my personal hero and best friend, and without him, I wouldn't be half of who I am today. He listens to the podcast with me sometimes, so on the off chance this was read, I want to add that to the record <laughs> why am i crying so much <laughs> that's lovely oh, amber that's very sweet amber. and a great fucking story oh, that's beautiful <laughs> i'm so happy for you amber amber good job you all deserve that i 
Your mother deserved it. You, a your nice, mother, and she found a wonderful she man. Found a wonderful man. It didn't matter if he had money. It helps. It doesn't. It helps that he's As a my rich mom would say, child. it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it never hurts. It never hurts. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh Fresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle. Easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Goodbye. Hello. Hey, Georgia, Karen, and Steven. Doesn't fucking care about pets. Cool. Uh, long time listener. <laughs> you like that? Long time listener has been meaning to write you guys for a while. My little sister Reba turned me onto your show after <laughs> you guys were on Anna Ferris's pod. Even brothers, I'm a guy, and sisters are bonding over shared interest in MFM, and we are coming together to your New Orleans, <laughs> to New Orleans. <laughs> there were two different lines. Show at the end of January 2018. We are also crazy cat ladies and love the percast, Stephen. Love it. Yay. Smiley face. Okay. <laughs> Lafayette is a big Catholic hub in Southern Louisiana. There was a rumor going around town in 1987 that a satanic cult was looking to sacrifice a Catholic priest along with a pregnant woman. You know, like <laughs> yes. Satanists like to do. Um, but, but my mom was actually pregnant with my kid's sister. I think it's Reba at the Reba. time. I'm Reba and my twin brother and I were about two years old. So my mom was literally barefoot and pregnant chasing two toddlers around the house waiting on my sister to be born. Fuck that shit. Uh -huh. uh, one afternoon, when she was late into her third trimester, she was on the phone with a female friend when my brother and I napped. She noticed a strange car slowly driving down our street, which was atypical of our quiet neighborhood. The car parked at the end of the street, and a woman exited the vehicle dressed in strange, flashy clothing with a wild, fiery red hair. Picture Susan Sarandon after her makeover in The Witches of Eastwick. Sure. Thank you for that reference. Mm -hmm. She walked past six other houses up our, drive up our driveway to the front door and began knocking thankfully my mom was a full-on satanic panic believer <laughs> and knew whatever was going on it was fucking weird and she was not going to answer the door she told her friend to call the police if they got disconnected and my mom ducked down and hid behind a kitchen counter the woman knocked and jiggled the door handle <gasps> for over five minutes Whoa. before giving up walking back down the road and leaving in the vehicle she had arrived uh, to this day, my mom is certain this wild woman was there to kidnap her for a satanic <laughs> sacrifice and also throws in a jab that if my brother and I had not been napping, one of us would likely have given her cover away because we loved when strangers or anyone <laughs> knocked on the door. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. Thank you, ladies, for bringing humor and levity to this sometimes dark world and for sparking my interest in true crime. Much love from the Cajun country. SSDGM, Corey. Yay. Yay. I love that. <laughs> That's so funny. What are the other things it could have been, though? Like an Avon lady? Yeah. But why would she walk by six houses just to go to this woman's house? Maybe she saw how badly she needed um, foundation. A makeover, yeah. And she was like, girl. But why would... Let's fix those eyebrows. It's weird. I think that's a beautiful... Um, that's a beautiful one to end okay. on. Just a lot of... Uh, we don't know. 
doesn't necessarily mean anybody was in danger. Right. But satanic panic is fun. And she played it safe. And she played it safe. She didn't get murdered. Because even if it wasn't a, a satanic, the, the you know, yeah. head of a satanic cabal or something, yeah. it could have just been a weirdo lady yeah. that was going to, like, bum her out. I also want to say that if your kid, even if you give you, your kids give you away and they're crying and screaming, that doesn't mean you need to open the fucking door. No. You can fucking blow, clearly blow the person off. You can tiptoe to your door and they hear you and you can look through the people and nope the fuck out of there and not answer the door. Yeah, you know what you should do? Hmm. Look, you can look through the people and then if you get caught, then you look out the window and start whispering and smiling. <laughs> ah, why can't you be the creep? Don't be scared of the creep outside. Oh my you God. be the creep. What if no one ever wants to come into your house because you're a creep? You know what's really funny? I was, well, I think I've said this to you before, but I was walking George one night and I was getting scared. I was like mm-hmm. around the corner and then I looked inside someone's window and I realized I'm the creep yeah. right now. I'm looking yeah. into the windows. They, no one can see me. I get to be the creep. Yeah. I thought about that too, like late at night and I'm in bed and like, if you hear someone like break into your house, let's say, and it's like, they're coming for you. It's like, they can't see anything either. Right. In the fucking darkness. So you, and you know your house better than they do. And yes. your eyes are fucking used to this light because you're an insomniac and you've been up for four hours. So you're, you can be a fucking scary person too. That's right. And you have run this scenario through your head at least five times. Right. So get up out of that bed. And if and you're like, you're all, you have your fucking pepper spray and a knife in your fucking bedside table. I, ho- I would hope you have at the very men's <laughs> a butter knife, a kitchen knife, or as my dad used to have a full on switch switchblade in his nightstand. That's what I have, too. That's my favorite. I have a switchblade and pepper spray. Switchblades? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I can't close mine, so it's just an open switchblade. Switchblades are very scary on the the going back inside. Yeah, I wouldn't fuck with that. Uh, Listen, just fuck with people. That's what we're saying. And uh, send us your hometowns and anything similar to my favorite murder at Gmail. Yeah, everything any similar to anything you heard today, especially if if you've got a story about meeting Elton John, we want yeah. to hear it. Ghost stories are great. We love them. If your ghost is great, dad is a good Elton person. John, it's, I would say yeah. it's really way up there, especially if he was wearing his Donald Duck costume when you met him. I can see him having glorious pajamas. And also just being like hilarious and leaving, like yeah. knowing it's like, look, it's me. Bye. Yeah, I'm just going to say one thing. Goodbye. Like the way, like, um, what's his name? Uh, oh, no. never mind. Cut Somebody that. who says one thing. No, how, what's his face? Uh, when people, um, uh, in the background of photos, Fo- photo bomb. Yeah. But it's, um, Tom Hanks. No. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Thank you, oh. Stephen. <laughs> um, Bill Murray photo bombs photos all the time. Does he? Yeah, he does. That's like, yeah, you can do that because you're Bill Murray. And That's it's right. Like the best story. I mean, once you get to that level, your life is so weird anyway. Yeah. There's so many things you can't do. Why not do a couple of things you can do? Yeah, make it weirder. Fun times. Wear an elf hat and go talk to people about the elevator. <laughs> and also stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Bye. Elvis, you want a cookie?